Good morning, friends, and welcome to our service for today. I'm really pleased to be back with you after my sabbatical, which was restful and reflective. And hopefully I'll be able to share with you at some point some of the things that I did on my sabbatical. My name is Ramona Samuel, and I'm a Methodist minister here in the Chelmsford Methodist Circuit. And so welcome to all of you joining us on YouTube, whether you are uh, a regular or this is your first time finding our channel, you are most welcome today. Today, our service is going to be looking at the theme of healing, um, looking at what happens when we reach out to Jesus and what happens when, for some of us who may not experience healing in the same way as others, and we'll have a conversation about that later on in the service. As always, I like you to be involved in what we do. So you may want to grab a bit of fabric if you have something lying around, maybe a scarf or something like that, that we will be using later on in the service. And of course, grab your Bibles, a notebook and a pen, um, because I may give you some stuff to do, or you may want to take notes. So again, you are most welcome with us this morning. And so we are going to listen to our first song for today, which is called Empty Broken. And it is done for us by Evernam Music. And I would encourage you to listen to this song and allow God's Spirit to speak to you through this song as we spend time in worship and prayer this morning. So let's listen to the song Empty Broken.
In a moment, I'm going to be reading from Psalm 30. I want us to think about what it is that we get from the Psalms. And I wonder if you were to write your own Psalm, what would that be like? What words would you use? What expressions would you find in it? I want to give you a little challenge um, if you are up for it to attempt to write your own Psalm. Maybe after the service, after you've watched this video, you might want to spend some time in quiet, maybe flipping through some of the Psalms and having to think about it and thinking about where you are and what's on your heart and mind and maybe write out a Psalm to God expressing those very emotions. The Psalms are full of emotions. And in particular, this Psalm this morning, I found helpful in light of Mark's reading, which I was struggling with a little bit, because I think the Psalm are very balanced in terms of lament, in terms of um, crying out, and it's mingled with praise to God. It's mingled with remembering the goodness and faithfulness of God. So let's listen to this Psalm as we reflect on where we are and what might my Sam be. I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O oh Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones, praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. When I was prosperous, I said, nothing can stop me now. Your favor, O oh Lord, made me secure as a mountain. Then you turned away from me and I was shattered. I cried out to you, O Lord. I begged the Lord for mercy, saying, What will you gain if I die, if I sink into the grave? Can my dust praise you? Can it tell of your faithfulness? Hear me, Lord, and have mercy on me. Help me, O Lord. You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy that I might sing praises to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. So let's pray. Loving God, thank you for your love and faithfulness to us. We praise you for all that you are. And even in those moments, well, especially in those moments when we are finding life difficult, when it seems that you are far from us. Remind us of your presence, Lord, and draw near to us. And help us to know that in our moments of grief, in our moments of sorrow, in our moments of questions and toil and hardship, you are very much with us. And help us to lean on you for strength and courage and comfort to make it through those difficult times. Draw near to us, Lord. Draw near as only you can. Draw near with comfort and hope and strength and peace. Help us to find the answers we are looking for in the words of scripture, that we may draw from them comfort and strength. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love and goodness. And this morning, in this moment, in this place, we offer up ourselves to you 
We ask that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. And so we listen to our next song, Heal Us, Emmanuel, Here We Are. We know that the word Emmanuel means God with us. And so we rest in that promise of Emmanuel, God with us. And after our song, we will listen to our reading from Mark's Gospel, which Tiana will read for us. chapter 5 verses 21 to 43. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. 
When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realised that the power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciple answered, and yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Koram, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for your word, which is life-giving and powerful and strengthening. I pray that as we look into your word, that our hearts would be open to hear what you would say to us and our hands would be ready to do what you might ask of us. Amen. Now, I said earlier that when I read this um, reading from Mark's Gospel, I was feeling a bit unsure, if I'm honest, about using it in the service this morning. And normally that I probably would have been fine with it. But this last few weeks, um, I have got a friend who, whose son was tragically um, killed. And reading that passage really made me feel a little bit angry and questioning God as to why this has happened and thinking about, well, what about all those people who do not get ill? <clears throat> and it's the age old question that we've been asked, that has been asked throughout history, really. Why do good things happen to bad? Why do bad things happen to good people? It's asking a variety of ways, or why is this happening? Why is that happening? And we ask why. And the premise is always that somehow God is responsible and that God isn't keeping up um, God's end of the bargain in looking after us and in taking care of us. But the truth is life is fraught with difficulty and we cannot determine what may or may not happen. We do not have control over how other people might respond to, to things. We only have control over how we respond. And so as I think about this, this um, text, which is an interesting one because it starts off with um, Jair, 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 Jairus um, approaching Jesus um, to, to heal his daughter, Jairus, uh, a powerful, a powerful man, you know, came to Jesus to say his daughter is dying. And, and then in the midst of that, sandwiched between um, the story, we have the woman who had been hemorrhaging for years, who comes and touch the hem of Jesus's garment. And so we have these um, two stories mingled together which is really, really fascinating. One, where somebody is actively asking God to do something. And another, where somebody is saying, okay, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to reach out and see what happens. And the idea of touching 
the hem of Jesus' garment is fascinating to me. And I thought about what power there is in things that we have around us or what we associate with different things around us. So we know that children, uh, most children have sort of security blankets that they hold on to, um, that comforts them, a comfort blanket that comforts them. Some of us look to different things to bring us comfort. And I find that image really powerful, that image of the hem of Jesus's garment being this symbol of healing and wholeness, that the mere touching of it produced healing for this woman. And so I want to invite you to, if you do have a bit of fabric, just hold on to it uh, for a moment and to think about your own life, your own self and all the things you bring to this moment. And to imagine that the thing you are holding is the hem of Jesus's garment, the hem of his robes. And I wonder what might you offer to God in this moment? What might you be asking and hoping that God would do? Because this woman, she says, if I could only touch the hem, then I can be healed. And that made me think of risk taking. She was taking a risk, a huge gamble. She didn't know if this was going to work or not. She didn't know if she would get rumbled and somebody would spot her in the crowd and say, hey, you have no rights to be here because they would have known about her, her illness. And in that time, a woman hemorrhaging for such a long time would mean that she was unclean. She had to be separated from society, banished, if you like. And here she was taking that risk, not knowing what the outcome would be, but believing in faith that God was going to do something for her. And I love the faith of this woman. I love her courage. I love her risk taken. And I think sometimes as Christians, we play it safe so much as human beings in, in general. We like safety, don't we? We like to know what the next step is going to be. We like to know what the desired outcome is. And so when we are presented with something Say somebody comes up with a plan and they have this idea to do something. I know I've experienced that lots of times in meetings. And the first question is, well, how is this going to work? And people begin to imagine all the different scenarios and began, begin to think about what could go wrong rather than see the possibilities of what could go right, what might be productive and successful so I want us to learn from this woman, this unnamed woman in scripture. You see, Jarius was a person of power and he came to Jesus for help, perhaps expecting Jesus to do something. You know, he was saying, listen, my daughter is dying. You, you do something about this. And I'm sure that we sometimes feel that way when we go to God and we say, listen, this is happening. Do something about it. And of course, as we read through the story, we find that word comes to, to um, Jairus and says, your daughter is, is dead. Do not trouble the teacher anymore. And sometimes I think we can, we can feel as if we're troubling God that we have been a pain when we keep going to him and asking him to help us with whatever situation we are struggling with. Truth is, God is never troubled by us. He's never bothered as to how many times we come to him for help because God is a God who cares. And it may seem like God doesn't answer those prayers. And that's when we ask the question, what does that mean? Doesn't God care about me? God does care. 
But the truth is, life has a way of throwing things at us that we have no control over. Because that's the way it is. Life and death is part of human existence. And so instead of questioning why, perhaps we can ask the question, why not? And that's quite a, a brave question to ask. Why not? Why not me? Why not so and so? But really, as we think about these two stories, and as we think about God doing the impossible, it reminds us of the story of the resurrection when Jesus was nailed to the cross, left for dead, and it appeared as if that was the end of the story, but it wasn't the end of the story. Because you see, the story of Christianity is about life after death, that there is hope beyond the grave. So even when we do find that we face death through our loved ones, when healing doesn't come to us, we know that because life is still going on, there is still hope. There is still something that we can hold on to, that we can cling to. Because God offers us and promises us that resurrection power. And through death, through bereavement, we find stories, we can find, <coughs> excuse me, stories of healing, stories of reconciliation that can occur because families and friends come together and we can find that stories of, of resilience and strength and, and abundance and growth, even, even in death. And so today, I invite you and I encourage you to be, <coughs> excuse me, to not allow death to be the end of the story for you. To not allow death to take away what can come out of this story to prevent you from seeing the resurrection and the hope that exists in the story of death and to take comfort from scriptures so that when you are faced with very very difficult situations you will know that you can take the risk to reach out to God touch his garment and perhaps you might want to um, keep um, something um, close to you maybe at your bedside table something tangible that you can hold for those times when you're feeling like you could do with those healing powers of God to remind you of God's presence with you in your very difficult moments so be encouraged, there is resurrection power, even in the stories of death. Amen. For our prayers of intercession, I'm going to play some music. And I invite you to spend some time reflecting and pouring out your concerns to God. And if you want to write any prayers in the chat or in the comment section, you are free to do that. Remember to keep the first names if you are praying on behalf of someone because of the public nature of this um, worship um, session. So listen to this music and allow God to speak to you through his spirit as you offer your prayers to him.
And so friends, thank you so much for joining us in worship this morning. I pray that you have been encouraged and inspired through the songs and the reading of scripture and to the words that I shared with you. Do join us again for our usual Sunday morning service in, in this platform, Chelmsford Methodist. And if you have not already subscribed, please subscribe and also like this video if you found it valuable to you. And we would love to hear from you. Visit our website, Chelmsford Methodist. Um, and if you have a question, do uh, send us your questions or request for prayers and we would love to chat with you. Our church buildings are opened so you can join us in person and again the information for our services will be on our website. I want to leave us with this closing hymn. It's a very upbeat song and you may want to get up if you're able to and dance around or sit in your chair and move around as you are able and the song is called I know my God will turn it around. And I thought it was quite fitting uh, based on what we've been talking about today. So be encouraged, be blessed, and God bless you. Let's listen to this song. I know my God will turn it around. I have seen my God turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life. See my God turn it around
swing like a turn it around. There are so many, many, many times in my life that I have seen like a turn it around.